guys, I'm Moriarty, this is Moriarty's Universe, and today is a Christmas haul. So Christmas has come and gone. We are starting the last week in December. New Year's is on its way. I don't know how many other people are, but I am thoroughly ready for 2021. So I'm going to talk about the things that I got for Christmas. Um, so here we go. So for my friend Claire, who is an absolute fucking sweetheart, I got a print of Catwoman from Batman 66, which everyone knows is one of my favorite Batman. Um, I'm very much into the more campy version of Batman than um, the one that everybody knows and loves. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. I received this that she sent to me and it was just so sweet. <sighs> She's the best friend. And then she got me a sticker from Animal Crossing, which I am in love with and play almost every day on my Switch. And it's Timmy and Tommy on tricycles. I don't know if you guys can read what it says, but it says, what's up, you broke bitch? And then Tommy in the background's like, bitch, like, if you don't play Animal Crossing, you're not gonna get it. But if you do, let me know how hilarious that is. I'm already trying to think of what um, I'm gonna put it on because it's amazing. Books. So all of these books are from my fiance, Boy Wonder. I had a bunch of books on my list and I, he asked me what I wanted for Christmas, and I was like, I've got like an Amazon list going. And he was like, okay, I'll check that out. And he did, and now I have books from my list. So here we go. So everybody knows I'm a huge Nancy Drew fan. Everybody knows I love the 80s case files of Nancy Drew, just because she's so much more grown up in those than the originals, which I don't mind. I still enjoy reading them. Um, so... In the 80s and the 90s, they started doing this thing called a Nancy Drew and Hardy Boy Super Mystery. They put them together, um, but it's the same writer and the same universe as Case Files. So I still get my like adult humor, my romance. So I got three of those. I bought the first one by accident um, from a thrift store. I was like, oh my God, Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys. Like, that's amazing. And I read it and it was glorious. And now I have three more to add to my collection. So I have Super Mystery, The Last Resort. And um, I'm just gonna read you like the synopsis for all of these. So this is Last Resort. Um, Nancy Drew is called to be a part of a dream team of super sleuths at a glamorous winter playground. Major rock star Brad McDougal is shooting a big budget video at fabulous Mount Mirage and owner Ken Harrison is worried. The deadly prankster who's been playing the resort may target the video for sabotage. Meanwhile, the Hardy Boys have also been asked to join the security force. At first, Nancy, Frank, and Joe manage to cover all bases and have fun doing it. Joe even gets close to country singer Roseanne R James. Then a music mogul is found murdered. Suddenly, the posh playground becomes a combat zone where rock stars and billionaires rub elbows with cold-blooded killers and where someone has scheduled the team trio to check out for far sooner than planned. I'm excited. This one, I think this one is um, number five in the series. And then I got a Crime for Christmas, which is number two in the series. Nancy Drew is in New York to join the Hardy Boys on an important case. They're conducting an intense manhunt for a pair of big time cat burglars. And they're sure the daring criminal duo will try to scoop a special prize, the spectacular crown jewels of Sarkon, which are on display at a museum. Meanwhile, Nancy's friend Bess is enjoying the holiday season with a dream date, a handsome and mysterious man named John. To impress Bess, John takes the gang on a torrid tour of Manhattan's fabulous nightlife. Their fling includes everything from horse-drawn carriages in Central Park to drawn guns at their Park Avenue hotel. But with political forces set to blow apart a gala UN dinner, Nancy, Frank, and Joe are suddenly trapped between hot rocks and a royal disaster. And this one is Mystery Chain. This is book eight in the Nancy Drew 
Hardy Boy series. And this one's called Mystery Train. Nancy Drew joins some of the best minds in the mystery field to help crack a famous unsolved case, the theft of the Camstock Diamond. A private train will take the elite group from Chicago to San Francisco, the same route taken by the jewel thief 15 years before. But someone is out to derail the search for clues and send Nancy on a chilling cross county ride to terror. Meanwhile, Frank and Joe Hardy climb on board, lured by the promise of a $25,000 reward for whoever finds the diamond. Instead, they find trouble. An open air fist fight atop the speeding train, a runaway locomotive, and a beautiful gem of a different kind, actress Kate Harkins. Joe is dazzled by her entrance and stunned by her exit. The teen detectives suspect that she's been kidnapped and it soon becomes clear they've all been ticketed for disaster. I don't know who writes the synopsis for those, but amazing. And then I got two case files. I got number 110 and number 29, Pure Poison and Hidden Meanings. Pure Poison, someone who knows too much is dying to tell all. Nancy is urgently summoned to Washington, D.C. by her old friend, Senator Marilyn Kilpatrick. When Nancy arrives on Capitol Hill, the senator, fearing her office is bugged, escorts Nancy to the street to talk. It seems that gossip columnist Beverly Bishop is about to publish a nasty expose that will ruin lives, including Senator Kilpatrick's. When Nancy visits the gossip columnist, she realizes that Beverly will stop at nothing to get her treacherous book into print, no matter who gets hurt. But will one of Beverly's intended victims try to get back at her? And can Nancy persuade Beverly not to write the final poisonous chapter? In Hidden Meanings, Nancy checks into a high-priced, high-rise hotel where danger comes free of charge. The Great Lakes High School Press Association is convening at the River Heights Atrium Hotel, a luxury palace of marble and glass. But for Nancy, it's turning into a house of sabotage and suspicion. Someone has targeted the beautiful Italian-born student Gina Fiorelli for harm, and she's targeted Ned Nickerson for romance. Gina's father is a man of immense wealth and political power, and she may be the victim of one of his numerous enemies. But the more Nancy investigates, the deeper the mystery becomes. Behind the hotel's magnificent facade lurks a tangle of secret ambitions, sinister desires that could prove fatal, not only for Gina, but to Nancy as well. So that is all of the Nancy Drew, but not all of the mystery. Next book on our list is Red and Gone. It is a haunted library mystery by Allison Brooke. $20 million worth of missing gems bring Carrie Singleton's long lost and larcenous dad back into her life and it's up to Carrie to clear his name. A devoted dad is as precious as diamonds, but Carrie Singleton wouldn't know since her dad, Jim, has been on the lam most of her life. In an unusual family reunion, she finds Jim breaking into her cottage in the middle of the night. The fun really starts when he begs her to help him recover his half of a $20 million gem heist he pulled off with the local jeweler, Benton Parr. When she refuses, Jim takes off again. Carrie finds her father again behind bars for the recent murder of Benton Parr, who made the connection. Unbeknownst to her, Carrie's boyfriend, Dylan, an insurance investigator, has been searching for the gems. Determined to find the jewels herself, she starts examining every facet of Parr's life. She turns up a treasure trove of suspects, one of whom bashes her on the head as she's searching the victim's country cabin. Returning to the quiet confines of the library where she works, Carrie watches as Smokey Joe, the resident cat, paws at a hole in the wall. Is he after the library's ghost Evelyn or something shinier? This is the second novel, The Haunted Library Mystery. I don't know which one was the first one, Death Overdue. It seems like it's gonna follow, so I might see if Death Overdue is on Libby so that I can read it on my Kindle and then I'll start this book. Last but not least for the books, we have Hell's Gate, a paranormal archaeological division uh, by Ernest Dempsey. Now, I don't remember putting this on my list. Boy Wonder says it's there and I mean it looks interesting so I'm excited. It's fictional. Um, it looks like it's gonna be like supernaturally mystery. On any given day, the experts at, at Atlanta's International Archaeological Agency crisscross the globe to rescue ancient relics long feared to lost to time, war, or thieves. 
IAA agents have recovered billions worth of missing antiquities, have wiped out entire networks of smugglers, and have even solved a murder at the Vatican. Their successes have made headlines from Tokyo to Turin to Tulsa, but some mysteries require deeper investigation, enigmas so puzzling that they defy the explanations of history, science, and faith for millennia. Enter their two top researchers, Alex Sims and Tara Watson, among the brightest, most dogged investigators ever to unearth the secret. This husband and wife duo has played a key role in every major success at the agency, but they've never been tested like this before. Their first assignment, to track down and stop a resurgent order of neo-Nazis who believe a cache of ancient stones holds the key to a new eternal German Reich. Alex and Tara, whose weapons normally include computers, lab equipment, and reference books, are about to face an entirely new brand of war in the real world against real criminals with real guns. They'll need every bit of skill, luck, and maybe a miracle to stop these madmen who are hell-bent on opening Hell's Gate. So these two are probably the most heftiest books. The Nancy Drews aren't, usually aren't more than like 150, 175 pages. Hell's Gate is 241 and Red and Gone is 312 pages. So this is the thickest baby for Christmas. I am still working on A Twisted Tale. Um, I started the first couple of chapters. I honestly am not feeling it. I know that Diana is super excited about it, so I'm gonna keep trying to jug through and just see how much I can complete before my brain explodes. Um, but moving on, I still have two more things to show you. So my second to last thing and my most favorite is this Marshadow plushie that Boy Wonder got me for Christmas. So those are like his little ghostly trails. And then they got his little scarf. And then his little ears and his little headpiece. He's so cute. Look at him. Close combat. I'm so excited. He's super soft. Super adorable. And now I can add him to my collection. So Marshadow is probably one of my favorite ghost Pokemon. I actually have him on my ghost Pokemon thigh tattoo. Because I'm cool like that. And it's really cool to have a plushie to go with them. Yay! Last thing on my list is film. So I've been wanting to get back into shooting film. I haven't shot film in a really long time. Um, the last couple of roles I shot didn't actually turn out because I am one of those horrible people that leave their film cameras in their car so they're always with me. Um, I need to start remembering to keep film in cold places because the heat causes the film not to function properly and thus you don't have pictures. So I got kind of discouraged by that and I just haven't picked any more up. Also film is really fucking expensive. I don't know if it's because it's a resurgence of like the people getting into the art form. I don't I don't know. I remember when I used to be able to get like a six or a seven pack of film for like twenty dollars. Now you're doing good to get two rolls for forty five dollars. Like so I'm really excited that I got this color negative film. This is Lomography. It's thirty five millimeter film. Each roll has thirty six exposures, so that means I can take thirty six shots per roll. There's three rolls in here. Okay, so that means that in this box I can take up to 108 single exposure photos. Now, if I double expose every shot, I can get double that, but that's only if I want to do that, which I probably don't. Um, so this is Lomography Color Negative Film. It is a 100 ISO, so it's supposed to give you that super light, airy um, feel. I'm super excited. I can use this with any 35 millimeter camera. So that means that I can use it in my um, Pentax K1000, which is my film camera of choice. And I'm so excited to start shooting film again. Um, I know it's about to be January. I know it's about to be cold and dreary. So this will probably wait until 
March, April when it starts getting warmer. But I was so excited to have it. Also, um, since this is the first time since I've been on camera in a while, I also wanted to tell you how Art Goes Boom is doing. Um, so we now have four videos up on our YouTube channel, one full episode and then like little snippets because we enjoy doing different things. So I originally slated it as a podcast, but we realized that we are too energetic for just audio. So we're going to leave it as a YouTube channel. Um, there'll be one episode and then lots of like snippets and like sneak peeks and different stuff like that. We filmed two holiday videos that are coming your way, one for Christmas, which should already be up, and then one for New Year's. So you guys should definitely check that out. I'm gonna put the link to the channel in the box below so that you guys can go check it out. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, your support is literally everything in these trying times. And it's so nice to be able to see someone enjoying the content that we make. Fairy Diana and I have lots of content coming your way. We have the Beauty of the Beast for July, uh, January. We have some romance stuff planned for February. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss out. And I think I'm done with our Christmas haul. And don't ever talk to my son again. No, I'm just joking. So thanks so much for listening to me ramble. You're Moriarty. <laughs> this is Moriarty's Universe. And I'll see you next time. Bye.